and good evening. This is our first lesson on truth. What is truth? And this is just a basic introduction on uh, the teaching of truth. Our first lesson would tell us that God is truth. Now, truth is an important doctrine that's found throughout the Bible. It's basic to the study of other doctrines. But truth is not some impersonal concept or idea. God is the final and the ultimate truth. He is truth itself. Uh, but he is the God of truth as well, as stated in Psalm 31 and verse number 5. He, in fact, is the true God. Jeremiah 10.10 10. The Greek philosophers asked three main questions, and their questions were, what is justice, what is beauty, and what is truth? You may remember that Pilate asked that question on the eve of the crucifixion of our Lord. He said, what is truth? And Jesus himself, of course, is the incarnation of truth. For he said in John 14, 6, I am the truth. Truth is in Jesus, and Jesus is the truth. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 21, reads this way. It says, if so be that, he, that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. God is the source of all truth. He's the source of all facts, actually. He's the source of all existence, reality, even law. All truth is God's truth. God is truth. He speaks the truth. He gets to define the truth. Someone said that God is the truth. The Bible is the truth about the truth. And fundamentalism is the truth about the truth, which is about the truth. That sounds like a lot of doublespeak there, but the Bible is simply the word of truth because of one factor. It is God's word, and God's word is not a lie. Secondly, there is no such thing as a brute fact. You may have heard people describe things that way and say, well, this is just a brute fact. Can't argue with it. Cornelius Van Til popularized the theological statement that there is no such thing as a brute fact. And he was right in this aspect. No fact simply exists in and of itself. All facts are true because God made them so. Whenever or whatever is true then would find its source in God. For example, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Well, why does it equal 2? We can't say, well, just because that's, that's that. He just does. But 1 plus 1 equals 2 because God made it like that. God is higher than all the facts. Even the laws of mathematics exist because of God. It was Gordon Clark, and this is what he meant when he said that all the laws of science are false. That's exactly what he was meaning. Uh, something does not exist in and of itself, but it exists because God made it so. That includes facts. God does not say something because it is true. It is true because God has said so. Facts are but that little glimmerings of what God makes true. Thirdly, truth is not determined by man. Since God alone is true, truth is not determined by man. For man is not God. Truth is determined by human vote many times. It's, it's proven by opinion or observation or maybe even science or feelings. Well, that's not how real truth is ever determined. You can't take a human vote on truth because truth can't be decided by a human opinion or an observation. It's our job to discover truth, not to invent the truth. Man has personal tastes and opinions, and these are merely subjective feelings. Humanism would make man the measure of all truth. This is but to deify man and to dethrone God. How, then, does man discover truth? Well, he does it by receiving it from God. God reveals himself through nature, partially, and through scripture, more definitely. Man's part is to believe it on the basis of God's authority. Wisdom is seeing things as God sees them then. The first step is faith. We must believe whatever God says. Otherwise, 
we're calling God a liar. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 10, we read, He that believeth on the Son hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Now, to believe God is sub to submit our minds to him. It was in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 4 that the Paul said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Then he says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It is to recognize that God is truth and He alone has the right perspective on creation. This is truly the correct thing to do. The fear of the Lord, we are told, is the beginning of wisdom in Psalm 110, 111 and verse number 10. Because we are finite and sinful, we do not see things as they really are. We need God to teach us. We'll see something and misread it oftentimes, but we'll see what God says in His Word and get the correct view. God's Word then makes us truly wise. The opposite of wisdom is what the Bible calls folly, foolishness, maybe even insanity or nonsense. Sin is the very epitome of folly. It is spiritual insanity to believe one's own faulty perspective rather than God's. Fifthly, Discernment is the ability to distinguish between truth and error. Now, one key aspect of wisdom, of course, is discernment. It is the ability to tell truth from error, good from evil. Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 11 reads as follows, Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that useth the milk is unskillful in the words of righteousness. Why? Well, for he is of babe. But strong meat belongeth to them who are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see, Adam and Eve lacked this when they believed Satan and themselves rather than God. We need God's Word to be able to distinguish things that differ. Sixthly, truth and error are definitely different. Truth and error should be considered opposites. They are irreconcilable enemies. They are as different as light and darkness. God is truth and light. In him is no darkness or error. We read this in 1 John 1, 5, just in the opening verses. We are told, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Among other things, this means it's a statement, uh, that, that a statement can actually be true or false, but it cannot be both. A statement cannot be true and false at the same time in the same way. We call this the law of non-contradiction. Uh, A cannot be the same as non-A. God has made things the way they are and does not play tricks with us. It's not true to ever say the exception proves the rule. Exceptions disprove the rule and show that the rule then was faulty. God is not a God of contradiction. The Bible has no contradiction. It is Satan, not God, that is the father of error and lies. We read that in John 8, 44. Modern man greatly errs when he fails to see this difference. Number seven, truth is in fact reality. The fundamental definition of the word truth is simply reality. A true statement is one that corresponds with reality. If we say the sentence, the dog is white, is true, we mean by that that the dog really is white. The Greek word is aletheia, the Hebrew word for truth, emet, which also has the implication of trustworthiness, reliability. Truth just makes sense. Error, then, is 
nonsense. Truth is real. This so-called, there's a, a group called the Christian Science. They are a cult. They deny all of this, and they say that everything around us is really an illusion. But God has created things as real. It is a sin to declare that which he has created as real an illusion. We need to see things as they really are. And the way we do that is by taking heed thereto according to his law. Number eight, the truth is absolute, not relative. Modern humanism teaches that truth is relative. Each person then invents his own truth. Now, this is not only wrong and dangerous, but it is also sinful. It simply is not true that you make your own truth. We are created. We are not the creators. We cannot create reality. To say that we can is to say that we're gods, which is what the father of lies wants us to believe. You remember Genesis chapter 3. Truth is absolute, not of itself, but because it is rooted in God. God is the final absolute, and he does not change. The angels laugh and weep at the utter folly of nonsense, of modern humanist, humanistic philosophical errors that say, that's your truth, mine is different. That statement doesn't hold water. Until all this is seen from God's perspective, we are lost in a jungle of man-centered, sin-dominated, blind insanity. Eighth, truth is sometimes a paradox. Now, truth is not contradictory to itself, but truth is contradictory to error. Nevertheless, we are finite, and we do not generally see all the relationships between the things that God has said and the things that God has made. We don't always see that. God has re revealed some things to us as paradoxes. Now, a paradox is an enigma, like he that loses his life shall find it, and he that would save his life shall lose it, Mark 8, 35. Um, an antinomy is an apparent contradiction, or two statements which appear to be equally true that we can't resolve either one to be absolutely true. One of them, for example, is the sovereignty of God and human responsibility. Now, both of these are absolutely revealed truths, but we do not grasp how they are both true. They are mysteries. They are things that are partly revealed to us and they appear to be partly hidden. There's a verse that I always love to quote when I come up against something like this. It is Deuteronomy 29, 29. Easy one to remember. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and our children forever. Now that verse is not an excuse to not study. Just because you don't understand something in the Bible doesn't mean, oh, I don't understand it, so I guess it's not important. That's a secret thing. It belongs to the Lord. No, we are to study these things out and go to the Scripture. That verse ought to make you even more studious. The Trinity, for example, it's a mystery of mysteries. We know there is only one God and that He is three persons, but we cannot fathom the depths of that great mystery. And finally, this evening, Profundity lies in simplicity. One thing about truth is very important, and that is the deepest theological truths are not always the most complicated ones, but sometimes they're the most basic ones. Theologian uh, once said that the most profound truth that he ever learned was that Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Often, the deepest and most profound truths are stated only in a few words, like God is love. Christ died for our sins. So, truth is to be received by childlike faith, which has a kind of naive innocence to it. This is to be truly wise, to say that which God hath spoken is truth. Anything contrary to what God has spoken is a lie. You keep that in mind and that will end much of the debate and errors that you deal with. When a relative comes to you and say, well, I believe such and such, ask yourself, what did God say concerning that? Because whatever God said, that's the truth of it. Have a great evening.